how often should you get into your 401k and make changes, change your investments? Ooh, I'm gonna give you some perspective. I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard, I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications and smash that thumbs up button. Right now it's near the end of the year and oftentimes people are reflecting on the year and they're thinking about the year to come and they think about you know health <laughs> and they think about finances a lot. And so, especially with the volatility that we've seen this year, it just sort of begs the question, how frequently should you log into your 401k and make changes? Is there sort of a rule of thumb or do you do it based on your emotions or, or you know, based on what's happening in the, in the stock market? Is that how frequently or is that what determines how frequently you should make changes? And I would argue no. And, and there's a couple handles that I would uh, that I'd kind of bookmark this on. And then I'll give you my overall recommendation. And number one is there's a financial saying out there that your investments, your portfolio is like a bar of soap. The more you handle it, the less of it you'll have. And, uh, and, and I think to some degree that there, that's true. And there's a lot of data that suggests that, you know, the average investor underperforms the overall stock market. And I think that's a bad comparison to begin with because most people aren't taking that level of risk. Um, but these studies sort of show that people in general tend to make changes at the wrong time and they end up chasing their tail and, and, and not performing the way that they should otherwise perform. And, and, and sort of that goes to the second, sort of the, the, other, the other bookend. And that is that there's a temptation, especially with the 401k, to instead of having a prudent investment approach and philosophy, instead the default behavior is sort of following the crowd. And yeah, I know we all log into our 401ks now and we rarely get statements, but if you can imagine or just think back to when you did get your 401k statement, predominantly a lot of people would make their 401k decisions based on they get their statement and the front page shows you whether it went up or down and that drives your emotions. And if it went down, you often think, well, I'm in the wrong stuff. And maybe if it goes down once, one quarter, you think, nah, nothing of it, I know stuff goes up and down. If it goes down again, or it starts going down more, then you start thinking, I'm in the wrong stuff. And so what you do is you flip open the page. And, and that, that second page maybe is a detail of what you're invested in, but maybe that third page, it shows that you know, here's the list of all of the investment options that are available to you inside your 401k. And it then looks like the matrix. There's just a bunch of numbers. So you've got the list of all your investment choices. And then the first column is the three month return. And then the next column is the one year return. And then the next column is the five year return. And the next column is the 10 year return. Well, all of those 10 year returns start looking pretty similar. And so that's, not, that's no help. And plus they're 10 years and you know that you're struggling with your performance right now. So you look at that first column, that three month return, and you tell yourself something logical and that is what's done well recently are the good funds and what's done poorly recently are the bad ones. And because you're not liking your performance anyway, you look and you say, oh yeah, I'm in some of these that have gone down and these others that haven't gone down, those are the good ones and you make the change then. That is simply following the crowd because on that list of, uh, of your 401k investment choices, hopefully you've got a lot of good funds that are just within their area, okay? Within their, within their, their specialty and they're cyclical, if you will. And so you might be looking at an investment or holding an investment that right now it's been a bad season, but long-term it's a great fund and you get out of it jumping into one that's just had a good season right in time for that one to go and have a bad season because everything is cyclical. And it's more complicated than that, but you sort of, you sort of get the gist. So therefore our emotions like that following the crowd or what have you, what our emotions lead us to making a lot of bad financial decisions. So then it just kind of goes back to the question, how frequently should you make changes to your 401k? I would argue once a year, once a year. And, and 
the, the biggest reason that I can state or the biggest evidence that I can show is this chart right here. Now, this isn't the final rate of return for 2022. That's, that's not out yet at the time I'm recording this, but it's gonna be somewhere in there, probably you know within a couple percent there. But for all of the chaos over almost 100 years, it's been a lot of green. There's been a lot of green specifically even over the past 40 years because there's been a lot of talk about comparing this time period to 40 years prior when we've had all that inflation. And, and take a look, since 1980, what, there's been you know, less than 10 years? Out of 40, there's been less than 10 where the stock market actually finished negative for all the challenges, for all of the challenges that we've had. 08, the tech bubble, it, you know, like, Guys, those are the two worst stock markets since the Great Depression and all of the challenges in between. And there's just been, there's been so much volatility in the stock market. And yet so often, this, the, the year, when you just look at it on a yearly basis, it's been a good year to invest. Not every year, absolutely not. And 2022 appears to be one of them. However, being steady through it and not looking too frequently, making too many emotional changes, still should have allowed you to stay the course and to have reaped significant growth over, over, the, over history. Therefore, yes, I'm a fan of not touching your investments as frequently, okay? So why the one time a year? The one time a year, you do need to tune in and make sure you're taking the right level of risk. If you're a fan of the Wise Money Show and our channel, I said that, I mean, this it, for the past three years, it's been significant how risk has, has increased from COVID to then just the explosion of the stock market after and all of the bubble that appeared to be created. And then now, as we're seeing, not the bubble pop, but just a lot of uncertainty and volatility, it's just been make sure you're taking the right level of risk for your overall financial situation. And yeah, that risk feels good when markets are going up and feels bad when things are going down, but not overreacting or not making too many moves should allow you to have a good long-term experience and performance. Should you make changes? Yeah, I mean, and will there be times where you might wanna make changes twice a year or three times a year? Yes, but, but I would encourage you, I would encourage you to have a more, have an unemotional, more disciplined approach and say, you know, around the beginning of the year, I'll look at my investments and I'll update things accordingly. Josh Gregory, one of the co-hosts of our weekly one hour talk show on this channel, actually says twice a year, you know, right right now about the beginning of the year and then at halfway point as well, go in and, and give yourself the opportunity to make some changes. Make sure you're taking the right level of risk, you still like your strategies and make adjustments if, if you need to. I think that is, is a good approach as well. But as your emotions, you know, uh, get kind of charged up, that's, that's, I would argue that's not, that's not the indicator to determine when you should or how frequently you should make changes to your 401k. So have a disciplined approach once a year, maybe twice a year, but a more disciplined approach saying, I'm not going to let outside circumstances influence when I should make investment changes because I just understand the risk is significant. The evidence is overwhelming that it's likely I could make an emotional decision. So once a year, when you do that, when you log into your 401k, make sure you're following a process. Make sure you're looking at overall allocation and avoid following the crowd. Like I mentioned, working with your certified financial planner, they're gonna help make sure that you have the right strategies, that you've got the right level of diversification and you avoid that following the crowd. The other things that I would do that one time a year is I would double check your rebalance schedule. Again, if you're not going to be tuning into this very frequently, you do wanna be able to make sure that your allocation, your mix, your recipe is followed even when times are strong, like right now to say, make sure you're not overextended in one area. That rebalance schedule allows you to take a look at automatically, unemotionally. And if one area, one slice of the pie was supposed to be this much, and because it's done really well, it's now this much, it trims back those gains and allocates those dollars to an area that maybe was supposed to be this and maybe underperformed. This allows you, this unemotionally allows you to sell investments that are high and buy investments that are low, hopefully cyclical investments. So update your re rebalance schedule. Also, while you're checking out your 401k, make sure you've got the right beneficiaries on your account. That is also something that we see all the time. People overlook and they don't have accurate. And then number three, update or increase your 401k contribution amount by 1%. 
by 1%. Yes, you should know how much you need to be saving into your 401k to be on track with your retirement goals. 1% doesn't move the needle one way or the other, but it typically that 1% you're not going to miss. You're not going to even feel it in your paycheck and it adds up over time. So while you're being disciplined and only looking at your 401k, getting in, making changes just once a year, make those double checks as well to ensure that you're on track. Work with your certified financial planner on all of that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team, find us online, cohorn.com. That's cohorn with K. Wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or send us an email, info at cohorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.